I'm just gonna mark the rim. First in quarters, and I just do this by eye, it's not really that big a deal. Um, and then I'm gonna mark it in eighths. So just between each quadrant, just put another mark in the center. There, now we have eight little lines. I'm gonna take my cheese cutter and we're gonna facet. This cheese cutter used to have a little roller bar here and I found I was able to just pop that out and then it's just a tensioned wire and it is about four inches long and we'll find one for our $10 patrons for a tool from the tool list. Um, so you can do this just using a, your own cutoff wire, like a tensioned cutoff wire, but the only thing about those is they're typically braided and so they leave a texture. This is a solid um, wire and so it's not braided and there's no texture. Um, and it just keeps it nice and straight. It's easier to make a straight cut uh, using a cheese cutter, I find. Okay, so you can see for this diameter pot um, and, and the lines, I'm able to kind of take a chunk like this. The goal here, you can see I've got the wire stretched between the two marks. Um, so it's basically one eighth of the diameter. Sorry, one eighth of the circumference. Um, and I'm just connecting that uh, with the wire. Now the goal is to go straight down. So I need like to be really steady with that and not go in and out at all. So you can just wing it and go for that. Another thing you can do is kind of put a straight line on the side like this that connects to that top line and that'll give you kind of an edge to follow as you're moving through. So that works quite well. So I'm just gently moving down and I'm trying to watch this line so that it doesn't wave too much. I found you don't want to pick at this top edge to get that to re release. Just take the same wire and come up from underneath and then you can see it just comes right off. Um, okay, we're gonna do that again. Now one nice thing is the next cut will correct the line from the previous cut, if you're careful. So, there, that's nice and straight now. You can see, um, okay, the, the thing I wanted to say was don't uh, be too fussy with this. Just, just take a deep breath and go boom, and it'll be straighter than if you kind of like squeeze the thing to death and, you know, just relax. Another thing that I forgot to mention, you want to clean the wire every cut. Otherwise, you'll leave those little fuzzy bits behind and uh, you'll have to then clean them up somehow. So these little marks in the rim, you know, like if you're going to make a form, um, you might need to make it a couple times to figure out how, what the division of space is. You can use, if you're one of our $10 patrons, you can use the decorating disc um, that we included with a previous project. Um, to uh, figure that out. Like it'll give you divisions, you know, eight might not be enough. You might need tens, right? Ten sides or, um, you know, there's like lots of five sides, you know, it just depends on the diameter of the thing. So that, P that as a PDF is already there uh, for you guys to use in many different ways. This is one of them. Okay, there's our last facet. That looks nice. But now we're going to make it even cooler. Okay, um, I'm going to use one of these mud tools ribs for this job. It's a fairly hard rib. The green ones are, are fairly rigid, but they do have a little bit of flex to them. And it's kind of perfect for this. You want a little bit of flex. Um, so I'm just going to turn the wheel on. So I'm going to hold the rib like this and just start to push out into the wall. And I start by pushing near the rim and then work my way down into the interior. And then I'm going to take this rib, pushing down against the bottom of the bowl, all the way to the center point, and then just gently release the pressure. Now, take a look at the outside. You can see it's expanded slightly, and but it hasn't started twisting yet. So this is like, you know, uh, you want to just sort of take your time with this. Again, starting up by the rim, I'm going to flare the rim out, then work my way down towards the bottom. right into the center, like that. 
Now we're getting a slight amount of twisting and that sort of nice S-curve thing that starts to happen next to the facets. Again, I'm going to really start to flare the rim aggressively now and push down in the interior. You want to make sure you maintain a curve in the inside. So it's important to be really mindful of the kind of shape of the rib down towards the bottom. Um, okay, now it's starting to get somewhere, right? So now we're twisting and we've got a nice curve on the inside. So the question might come up, like, how much do I stretch? And the answer is, well, how thin is the wall getting, right, at the thinnest parts? So you'll know if, if this, like, uh, center of the facet point, which is, like, the thinnest area, um, if that starts to be kind of flexible, like, you'll feel that happening. You'll feel the rib shaking a little bit, and you'll see it um, being too thin. So that hasn't happened here. And we have still plenty of material with this kind of rim, um, that I created using that little piece of card material. So I'm gonna stretch this even a little bit more. So I'm gonna stretch this one more time. Um, you know, push out into the wall, actually under the rim this time, rather than stretching the rim out wider, because I really want uh, the bowl to be a little bit, have a little bit more volume. So now you can see the bowl is starting to uh, have more of a low volume, right? So below the rim, there's the, the bowl actually goes out slightly before it comes back in. So that's kind of a nice effect. These kinds of pieces really, they look very much like seashell forms, things like that. They can be really organic and beautiful. All right, so I just wanna show you again um, what's happening on the interior a little bit more clearly. Um, so I'm gonna push out under the rim with rib and then I'm, I've got the rib kind of flexed away like this like if my fingers are the bowl the rib is flexing against the bowl like that so it can fit down into that curve and I'm just moving towards the bottom good. Now things to watch out for. Um, you can see like some of these areas are are good. They're not stretched too much, but if you don't leave enough material in this little rim spot, um, you will, you'll tear right here. Like you can see in this bowl right here, that's getting to be very thin. You know, and it's like an option. It's kind of interesting if you ask me, but because um, glaze would fill in a lot of those areas, but just be really aware of that little shape we made with the card material, this little piece of card material when we were like doing this thing, um, that is gonna determine how wide you can stretch that cylinder um, to make that bowl. So these little bowls make a beautiful like French onion soup bowl set or ice cream dishes or all kinds of, um, all kinds of nice things. So, one more time. I'm gonna get under that rim and then flex the rib against the bottom, bring it right down to the center. Okay, so I'd say we're done stretching. Now, since we're doing all this nice sort of organic stuff here, I'm gonna wet the interior a little bit and take my rib push down against the bottom and then just kind of lift and move out and get that nice little spiral. You want to use this part of the curve, flex it down against the bowl and then move quickly faster than the wheel is turning to get that spiral to happen. You can see that nice spiral in there. I feel like the language of that spiral uh, kind of really works with all the organic sorts of lines that are happening on the outside of this piece. You know, that's like important, right? Like how do the um, how do the particular movements that you use or the particular types of marks that you're making on the thrown pieces like speak to one another, right? That's kind of what makes the work um, really, can be what makes the work really good. Um, okay, so just gently gonna clean up here a little tiny bit, not much. Just I'm just gently running the sponge over that surface, making sure there's no little cracky stuff happening. Okay, I'm gonna call that one done.